Good evening. Welcome to Ben TV. You're watching Quedia with Steve Pereira. We're returning tonight to our discussion with Dr. Dennis Oldman, Melbourne icon, activist and writer. Um, and we're talking about the end of homosexuality. Or is it? Again, one of the points you make is the importance of um, media and the importance of magazines and publications and TV shows as a, as a point of identity, as a point of um, coalescing a community around that. And that's exactly what happened in Bombay. They started Bombay yes. Post, which has then yes. started around the whole AIDS uh, awareness campaign. Which was a shock. A shock, Of course. Yes. yes. Who's Auntie a shock, as he would. Auntie I hardly call yes, himself where he's sitting so. here with us, and where he's sitting here with us, neither you nor I would get a word in. <laughs> no, they wouldn't. In fact, a friend of mine has just gone back to Bombay to post a picture for dinner last night, because they've gone back to try and mobilise around the re repeal yeah. of the new yeah. government legislation. I know a lot of the Indian activists, but I don't know India, so it's, I don't want to make any particular judgments. But I think that's a classic case where, I mean, the irony is the Indian laws are, of course, a legacy of British colonialism, right. and they're being supported by uh, Indian officials who are, in other circumstances, very keen in attacking British colonialism. Right. And the hypocrisy of you know, a majority of Commonwealth countries, British Commonwealth countries, still have the British laws. I have no patience for people who then turn around and say this is all the fault of the nasty British imperialists. I mean, the reality is these countries, India has been independent for 50 years. That's right. uh, several generations of politicians who have come to power on anti-colonial rhetoric have deliberately chosen to turn imported British laws into Indian morality. Now, you can't blame the Brits for that. No, there is that level of hypocrisy that exists yeah. all the way through. Yeah, you can't have both. You can't have both. And of course, the other thing one should say is, after all, we take for granted that most, almost every country in the world, maybe North Korea is an exception, wants to become affluent and wants to adopt many of the ways of doing things that are associated with Western capitalism. So perhaps uh, we should emphasize the pink dollar a bit more in that case. Well, the pink dollar has, I think, been an enormously useful myth. A know, myth? A myth. I mean, they're, 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 and I actually think I talk about this a bit. And there was that period from the 90s on when um, major companies started saying, oh, we really should target the gay and lesbian market. Mm. There's all that money out there. Um, it's a bit like the pink vote. Uh, it's not as important as they think it is, but it's a good idea if they believe it. So let's not disillusion them. Well, we've always had a query about the affluent queer community. I mean, if there is an affluent queer community, it's a tiny percentage of the overall community. And, and yes. I, I think you are right, but, but it is a useful myth sometimes to perpetuate because it does get us... But I, so just going back to media, because I think, you, you know, you, you mentioned the, the creation of Bombay Dost. Mm. That's part of an old tradition that uh, I come out of. And, and you told mm. me you were in Toronto, so you were aware of body yep. politic, which was in its day one of the most important gay liberation papers in the world. Mm. Now, of course, those sorts of movement magazines and journals are far less significant. And I guess when we talk about media, what's really important now is the way in which queer, lesbian, gay, trans characters are so common in mainstream television and the impact that has. And again, you know, um, I'm not quite sure why I wrote this, but I remember many years ago being in Manila and going through, you know, Manila is this huge city, very stratified by class, by income, uh, huge inequalities. In one of the slum areas of Manila, there was a bar that was showing uh, on its screen, Victor Victoria. All right. And I suspect for a lot of the locals who would have come to the bar because they wouldn't have had television mm. at home, this was an introduction to a way of thinking about themselves that they wouldn't have got any other way. Um, and now, of course, you know, something like Glee, which I think is a terribly interesting uh, program in the way it depicts mm. a whole set of sexual and gender issues, um, and it's often very confused, um, is probably seen by tens of millions of people across the world. Of course, people are going to take up uh, questions of identity and self-image from that, just as much as they're going to take it up from Indian and Mexican soap novellas. We, which still don't include gay characters, they include them in very extraordinary... Well, they series. don't in India. They no. don't in India, very no. stereotypical But certainly the Latin American ones do, 
And one of the things, we, we, we in Australia have this bizarre blind spot about that. I mean, we just don't recognize that countries like Brazil and Mexico are major countries with major cultures. Now, I remember being years ago in Mexico City and in the bus shelters, there were big um, gay uh, advertising posters that you wouldn't have seen at that stage in a bus shelter in Australia. So, you know, we must get, we have to stop this idea that somehow um, they, meaning developing countries, countries, are always behind us. That's not true. In terms of the, of the gay community here, you use a quote that, that I found fascinating, in both homosexual the, oppression and liberation and, then homo, and the end of homosexuality, or the end of the, of the homosexual, which is the Christopher Ishwood quote, mm. Annihilation by Blandness. Yes. You also use another quote, and you talk about the AIDS movement, and you quote William F. Buckley, every gay issue begins as a cause, becomes a movement, and as, ends as a cabal. There also is an air of nostalgia or regret about when you talk about gay organizing today as opposed to gay organizing in the 70s, in the 70s and early 80s with the, with the sense of a zeal or a, a grassroots organizing. Have we, become, uh, have we become petty bureaucrats? Have we, as a, as a community, well, have I we think I think there are too many things being put together. Yeah, so that. let's try and, as one would say in the modern world, unpack them. Okay, <laughs> I think Isherwood's quote, the annihilation by blandness, still is very important because mm. it strikes me that in a country like Australia, there is a new form of homophobia, which is nobody or very few people will, so and Corey Bernardi is an exception, mm. but very few people will express open dislike or distaste, but, but they will trivialise us in many ways. And I think that is true of some sections of the media, um, that... There just isn't, for example, the, the reporting of what's going on in our region where people are in some countries being persecuted because mm -hmm. of their sexuality. And I think that's where Annihilation by Blanders comes in. The other point, I mean, the other quote you refer to is, is very specifically about the fact that when AIDS came along, um, it created its own industry. Now, that's mm -hmm. both good and bad. I mean, you know, one can say, thank goodness. And we should be very relieved that in a country like Australia, there was a lot of government um, resources. Mm -hmm. uh, there was partnerships established between government, researchers, community, organisations, etc. Inevitably, as time goes on, organisations tend to become very fixed. And you end up, I think, where organisations exist to perpetuate organizations. That's right. People but, lose touch with why they set them up in the first place. It's like the anti-racism industry has become a self-perpetuating yeah. industry in the start. Um, I've been Steve Pereira. I still am Steve Pereira. You've been watching Quedia with Dr. Dennis Altman um, on Ben TV. See you next time. Thank you.